All right, here we go. This is Plug-In Thursday. I started it last week. Started one last week on bus compressors. And this week I'm doing it on comparing various 1176 style compressors. Now something to note here, we're gonna be using these plugins today on drums and then again on bass. We're gonna see the differences. Very common uses of an 1176. So that's what we're gonna go for today, drums and bass. Now what I'm not doing today, I used the word compare before. It's not truly a comparison in the traditional sense. What we're really gonna do is listen to the different tonal characteristics of each one of these plugins. You say, hey, wait, Barry, aren't these all basically 1176? So why would there be different tonal characteristics? Because there's never two 1176s in the wild that are the same. It's just the reality of it. The older ones are gonna have a different sound than the newer ones. It's not because of things other than capacitors and transistors just getting old over time plus the components they used previously and the ones today. So blah, 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 blah. The bottom line is not all 1176 plugins are created equal. There can be an application for one over the other in a certain type of song. Are they all gonna get the job done in the 1176 range? Of course they are. Yes, they are. Are you gonna like some of them better than others? That's my guess. I'm pretty sure some of you are gonna do that. I know I certainly did. Uh, there was one particular standout that I thought was complete garbage. You can figure it out, waves. So, so anyway, I, I shouldn't have said that before we started the video, but the reality is, look, you know, let's just see if you come to the same conclusion that I did, okay? You may have a completely different viewpoint and there's no wrong or right to any of this. So far, the direction of this particular series uh, is evolving. I'm trying to feel it out. The first one, was just to find out, is this something my viewers even want to see me do? There's other people doing this. Does it make sense for me to do this? And I got overwhelming support that, yes, you love these videos. I got one or two saying thanks, but no thanks. I can understand that too. Look, every piece of content I put out is not going to be great for everyone. So we'll see where this ultimately ends up going. I will do detailed, in-depth, plug-in related videos later on, but I thought I'd start with understanding and getting a sampling of what some of the differences are um, that you can achieve with basically what's marketed as the same plug-in basically. Some of them are absolutely modeling the core of an 11 and 76s, but give you options on top of that. It's still going for that 11 76 vibe, but it's kind of going for the 11 76 vibe Plus, if you want to do a little something else, you can do that. The next one I plan on doing with LA-2A style compressor plugins. That'll be interesting, and so that'll come up next week. All right, let's head over to the computer and take a lesson. But first, I want to give one solid piece of advice on how I feel you're going to get the most out of this video. And that is kind of go through it once, as far as the audio sample portion. Go through it once and listen do it visually so you get a sense of what we're doing. And then after that, I encourage you to go back and listen through it again, this time closing your eyes and trying to pick up when the change happens and really start to listen for some of those characteristics that that particular plugin that's being demonstrated at that time is doing for that track overall and certainly the particular uh, instrument it's being applied to. I think you'll find yourself smiling more than frowning. However, if your expectation is they're all gonna sound very, very close, I think I've made that clear already, in this guy's opinion, they're not going to. Now, you may hear them all sounding exactly the same, and if that's what you hear, then trust your ears. I'm going by mine, by what I hear. So let's head on over to the computer and let's take a listen. All right, well, it's time to take these ridiculous glasses off and uh, put my computer glasses on so I can see. I should probably do a video at some point just on these glasses because they were specifically, um, the prescription is specific just to my workspace in three different zones. So I have three different prescriptions in these glasses and it makes it great for those that suffer from uh, press or whatever they call it, you know, when you need reading glasses, that kind of stuff. So that is what I've done. I should do a video on that sometimes. All right, so we're gonna start this in new window and I'm gonna go through the plugins. Let me kind of run through the tune right now with no plugins on it and let's take a listen.
Now let's go through the plugins. First, we're gonna start out with the Purple Audio MC77, uh, which is a clone of their 1176 hardware version. One of my favorite 1176 clones out there, by the way. Next up, we've got the Slate Virtual Mix Rack, and we're using uh, Slate's version of the 1176. We'll be checking that out in a second. Next up, we've got one of the plugins I like a lot, and that's SoftTube's FET Mark II, and we'll be kind of going through that. This is one of the plugins I talk about that gives some enhancements on top of a traditional 1176, but certainly is designed to give you that 1176 vibe. Next up, what probably most people consider the holy grail of 1176 plugins, maybe you do, maybe you don't, we've got Universal Audio's 1176 LN. And no demonstration of plugins would be great without a Waves plugin thrown in there. You know I'm a fan of Waves. Here we've got the CLA 76. This happens to be modeled after Chris Lord Algae's 1176. And we're going to be checking that one out too. That's right, I don't have every plugin manufacturer here, but that's not the purpose of this video if you remember from the beginning of it. This is really kind of getting to understand the differences between various 1176 plugins to realize, one, they're not all the same. Neither are any two 1176 hardware pieces side by side going to sound the same. They should all be relatively close and along the same vibe, but they're gonna impart different tonal characteristics. I think it's important to understand that if you haven't quite come to that conclusion on your own. But then it's to find out for what track in what song is the best 1176 plugin that I own best for. So let's head on over there. We're gonna start listening. We're gonna start off with drums. I'm gonna solo that channel and we're gonna kind of demonstrate each plugin on and off one after the other so you can get a chance to hear the differences in solo mode. Then I'm gonna go into it and unsolo it and play it with the whole track and then kick them in and out as we go. And then we'll kind of talk about it again after that.
so there it is on drums. Uh, they definitely sounded very different to me. Uh, it was very obvious when when they were kicked in with the whole song playing. Now keep in mind, I didn't I didn't sweat the gain staging of this so that it was perfect because that's not what we're trying to do here. If anything, I wanted the drums to be slightly louder on purpose so you can hear the tonal effect of the drums. Actually, once most of these plugins are initiated, ultimately I would bring down the volume of the drums somewhat. Um, but I do love the effect of the 1176 on drums, and there's a reason it's the most widely used compressor in history. So let's head back over there and let's check it out on bass.
now I'm gonna play the whole thing. I'm gonna go back and forth between uh, on each particular one, bringing in the bass and the drums with that particular plugin. And then of course, bypassing it and going through each plugin one after the other. Now you are gonna notice that the, the low end is gonna go up significantly when you uh, combine what the, uh, now you're gonna notice with the effects of these 1176 plugins on both the drums and the bass, it's gonna cause that low end to kind of jump out. And of course that would need to be compensated after you compress. All right, so there it is on bass. You're seeing the differences there. Or you can EQ before. There, there's, there's no rules in right there, but there's traditional over non-traditional. So, but you can toy around with it and see what's gonna get you your best uh, result that you're looking for. So let's go back over there and let's kind of test this one out.
So here's kind of my thoughts on this whole thing. I'm not gonna go into which plugin I think is which, because ultimately, um, I already know. <laughs> so, so as far as which has which characteristics, but um, there are some that give a lot of tightness to the drums and tightness to the bass. Uh, there's another one that really beefs up the low end, really beefs up the low end and kind of brings it out. So you may be looking for that. Um, there's one particular one in there that I, what I would call is very high fi it's really doing the compressor thing without really doing too much alteration uh, of the original material. Uh, so I'm gonna kind of call that hi-fi. And then ultimately um, you've got one very traditional that does exactly what you would expect on 1176 to do. I'm sure you can guess which one that one is. And then lastly, you've got one that is a dog. Uh, and I can't believe I used it for as long as I did. Yeah, I'm talking about that CLA 76. Um, but anyway, I'm not a fan and I can't believe there were a lot of years I used that. And um, I think I'm gonna go back and find that in all my old mixes and take it out and replace that bad boy. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, go back and listen to it again, closing your eyes as you go through. That's where you're gonna hear the tonal differences between each one, or at least that works for me. All right, so uh, I have an affiliation with Sweetwater. That's right, you don't make much money off you, so I need to supplement the income with this channel, and that is simply by, uh, I am part of the affiliate program, which is just a very simple program, whereas if you choose to buy any of these plugins or anything else, there is a link down in the description below. You click that link, it will take you over to Sweetwater, and whatever you put in your cart, I will get an itty bitty percentage of. Uh, that is a way to supplement this so I can ultimately be fairly compensated for the work and the time that I put into this channel for all of you. And it is a lot of work and a lot of time, let me tell you. So anyway, if you do that, I really, really, really appreciate it. I find that I use 1176 plugins probably more, or that style of plugin probably more than any other compressor on the planet, and there's good reason for it. Again, I alluded to it earlier, which is why the 1176 is by far um, the most uh, used, respected, and valued compressor in audio recording history. So kind of keep that in mind as you try to sort out which one you want for your next project. So do me a favor, leave some comments down below. I pre always appreciate what you guys have to say. I do my very best to kind of comment as much as I can. Uh, and so put those down below. I love reading those. And until next time, hope every one of you have a great day. Bye-bye. Stay tuned for that plug-in next week on LA2A Style Compressors.